Uh, first of all, uh, I think I can speak for the book, both of us that we're really, really excited to be here and meet everyone of the community in person um, for the first time. Um, we will be bringing you a case of how we built a fully autonomous personalized email system with uh, Drupal and Nautic uh, for Ilario. Uh, let's start off by uh, who we are. Uh, this is Philip Waters and my colleague at Robsolids. He's also known as, known as uh, Greasy Freddy. And um, he's an enterprise architect and we're both in a team strike at your start. Uh, and I myself am Tony Hiss, aka uh, Magic Twana. We'll only go that to for that. Um, I'm a marketing automation specialist at Robsolids and also a uh, team strike. Uh, but first of all, a quick uh, spoiler alert. So we are from Solids. We created a seamless integration between Drupal and Logic. Uh, we allowed the customer for a 100% fully atomic personalized email um, system and this presentation we will explain how we build it and how the customer will use it in the future. Um, who is RobSolid? Um, we've been active in the Drupal and open source scene for about 8 years and we had 8 years of growth. Uh, we have around 90 people working with us and um, spread all over Europe, so we're mainly located in Ghent, also in Belgium. Part of us, uh, for example, Ian and Els, uh, work in our offices in Hasselt, and we have um, other remote people working all over Europe. We have also have uh, different partnerships all over um, Europe with uh, agencies, for example, in the Netherlands, but also in Swiss. Um, so, yeah, I think maybe for our clients, the one is most to know for you guys, maybe Lotus um, from the Biscoff and um, Cookies for the moment, if you're familiar with those. Yeah, let's go on. Um, Friedrich? So, uh, one of the important things that we offer our clients is the digital experience platform. Just a small introduction on that if you're not already uh, knowing what that is. Uh, the digital experience platform is um, a combination of the content management system, marketing automation, and a customer data platform, which allows for uh, anonymous personalization on your website, on your on your uh, platform, so if, uh, both in your email, in the marketing, but on your websites, both anonymous and uh, a login that used to be already possible in the past. Uh, so that's a big thing that we um, uh, try to. Uh, have a, as much integration as possible in our clients' systems. What's important that we do as Dropsolid there, we have created very tight integrations between the content management system and Mautic, uh, between Mautic and Apache Unomi, because Apache Unomi is our uh, CDP, and we, between Apache Unomi and Drupal, and because that's the building blocks we most often use there. Um, if you have more questions about this digital experience platform, I'm happy to elaborate on this after the presentation. Uh, oh, sorry. Next to the XP, we also are active in uh, strategy, UX, um, just uh, marketing automation and personalization uh, in general. Um, so, okay, now uh, let's get on with the core of the presentation. Uh, this presentation is about one of our clients uh, that is called Inagro. What is Inagro? Well, uh, Inagro is a, a research and advice instance in the west of Flanders uh, that specializes in everything from agriculture. So uh, you may ask, okay, agriculture, why is it so important? Well, in Belgium, especially in the west of Flanders, most of the people uh, working there, uh, that's uh, maybe not true, but uh, 38,000 people working in the west of Flanders uh, are active in the sector of agriculture and horticulture, sorry. And there is an annual turnover of 70 billion uh, euros, and about 30% of what they harvest or what they breed and feeds the, the dummies, I might say, uh, of everyone uh, in Europe. Um, they're uh, uh, active in every sector that you can imagine in the color, for example, um, edible mushrooms, but also cows, um, pigs, everything from fruits, fruits, vegetables, really everything from agriculture, and um, Inago does research on it. Um, they also have a couple of different, different teams, but the main goal uh, for Inago is to inform their different farmers or inform their different clients. We do it in four ways. First of all, with newsletters, uh, also with demonstrations, field visits, with workshops and lectures for the farmers, farmers and with articles and publications. And for this case, uh, we focus on the personal, personalized newsletters. 
Why it's okay? Why do farms need a newsletter that's personal? Well, uh, they have over 7,000 subscribers and publish over 400 articles each year. Um, the main thing here is that uh, every article has a specific subject, and they have over 30 subjects that each farmer can be subscribed to. So for example, I'm a farmer who is very active in vegetables, so I'm subscribed to salad and um, cucumbers. So that means I don't want to see anything about cows or strawberries. So that's why it's very important that the articles that the people receive in their email are only um, relevant articles for their subjects. And another a big thing to this is that uh, Imago itself doesn't have time to create emails manually. They want everything to happen automatically, so they just put it in the CMS Drupal and it needs to be sent out automatically and personalized without them doing anything. And um, in the past, they used to have a custom tailor-made stack doing all this. Uh, I think it was .NET and it was their headline, they had their, their in-house developer uh, maintaining all that stuff. But more and more, the trend, is, uh, the trend is there that companies are going to a composable architecture. What does it mean? It means that, and you also see that I used the, the, the slide from the Dries note, where uh, companies are going to a composable organization more and more. In practice, this means that companies are using a new out uh, provider. They're using Microsoft Dynamics. They're also using OAuth or SAP for the, for the ERP system and like all these kinds of tools. Uh, DropSolid with the digital experience platform is also an important player in their set of capabilities because that's what they need, capabilities. In practice, how does it look like for Inago? For Inago, we, they already have a single sign-on service, uh, but they didn't have the marketing automation and the web platform. It used to be like one big blob, and there we separated it, so we had a dedicated content management system and a marketing automation platform separated out of that. They already had a CRM, Microsoft Dynamics in our case, and they wanted a tight integration with the marketing automation platform, uh, Mautic, so that the context could be synced with their preferences between those two. Um, the web platform uh, is also linked to the single sign-on. Why? Because um, end users log into the website and they also want to see their personalized content in the website. So not only do they receive personalized emails, but when they log into the site, they also see personalized content there. So it's a fully personalized content experience that they want. Um, that's, I think, the most important part here. What do we need to, re what do we need to realize this? is that there is a transfer of personalized data, so the, the content that goes from the web platform to the marketing automation, and in the other direction, segments, preferences, and campaigns need to go from the marketing automation tool, from Mautic, to our web platform. We could have just used Drupal for this, eh? because Drupal can also send mails, but um, as you know, the email editing experience in Drupal is absent. There is none. And in Mautic, yeah, there is one. So that makes already a big difference. You want to continue on this? No? And also, Mautic gives us very interesting email analytics. Uh, of course, you all have seen these screens. Uh, but it's, I think it's really enlightening for users to actually see those because they didn't have those stats in the past. So it's, for us, it's like a given. But for end users, it's still important to note, OK, do you have actual working statistics on your emails. You see that so many mails are being delivered, so many clicks are being realized on your content, and they're using these kind of devices to see, to, to, to consume your emails. And what's also a big differentiator is that they can have control over their own uh, campaign flows in the system, where in the past it all was hard-coded. That's why it gave them a lot of flexibility to uh, have more control. And yeah, as told already, uh, the link with the CRM for them was also a game changer <clears throat> because it came almost out of the box. Okay, so a little more into detail. To realize this, we have to sync some stuff between the sides. I already told you. Uh, and we're going to start with the contacts um, that were synced to the user profiles in Drupal. Uh, you see here the context screen. Um, the moment the user logs in into Drupal, we're also syncing the, the user profile to Mautic. And this allows the user, when logged into the system, to edit their preferences. Here you see like uh, a lot of the 
the, the interests that user can be interested in. And when this uh, form is saved, it will also push your preferences to Martic, so that we know in Martic uh, contact has specific preferences. We are using the API to make this link. It's not a preferences page. Uh, this was one of the issues that we had with the Martic, but we use, we're using the API now to save these preferences to the contact. This is just uh, in Drupal. If you're interested, we're using the Martic paragraph module. There is an API connector in there. Uh, we are not using the Martic API module for this, just if people are interested in this. Um, one of the other questions that the client asked us was to have automatic campaigns. They really didn't want to do anything to uh, send an email, so it had to be fully automatic. In Martic, as you know, you have to create campaigns. Uh, so, yeah, we had to think about, okay, um, how are we going to let this happen fully autonomous? And then um, we knew the content editors were going to edit in Drupal. So they had their, like, familiar environment there. And for them, it was okay to have, like, a, visit, like, a view on the campaigns there. So what we did was uh, created a link between the campaigns that, so they, they were also represented in Drupal. This means that you, they could edit the campaigns in Drupal and it will also sync through the API to Mautic. Uh, but there is also an automatic, uh, let me see, uh, this is just a field, so it will also save the, the Mautic campaign ID in Drupal and it automatically generates on cron the campaigns for every so much weeks in the future. This allows us to have like, uh, it will automatically continuously generate campaigns all the time. And then in their content, they can link to a specific campaign, so they can create content. By, by default, it will be automatically linked to the campaign that is active in the specific week, but they could change it like editorially. This gives the users, the end users in the content flow, the ability to control in which newsletter content could be sent to their end users. That's on the campaigns. Here you see that the campaigns are being created in Mautic. And then um, the segments, so I already mentioned uh, in brief that in the, the profile uh, people have a lot of segments. In Drupal we have a thing called taxonomy terms, so a user, pro a user profile has fields and where we added a taxonomy term reference field. So it's actually just a link to like a, a tree of data and these taxonomy uh, terms are the the interests that the user can be interested in. And those are also automatically synced to Mautic segments. So this way the segments are automatically populated and Drupal is the master of the segments. Um, you, they could manually disable segments to be created in Mautic if they would want to have like Drupal only segments, but for now I think it's not the case. Uh, every segment is being pushed to Mautic. Here you can see, this is one of the examples uh, we needed to do the demo to the client and we created a newsletter with loaf, it's Belgian endives, and we wanted to see it automatically appearing in Mautic, so it works. Um, I think on the previous slide, just the main takeaway here to uh, maybe translate for the marketing people, uh, the focus was also here to make it really simple for them. So the only thing they needed to do was fill in a new subject, for example, cows in Drupal, and it gets automatically generated also in Mautic. So the connection is there, and they need to, need to do for yes, um, and then we're coming to the, the gist, the essence, like the most important thing to make it fully personalized, because now it's already automatic, it's using the content from the CMS, and now we're getting to the personalized part. Um, and that's where we're using tokens. So we created a plugin in Mautic that um, allows the editors in Mautic use these tokens and these tokens that you see here, personal events, general news and personal news, will be uh, replaced on send time um, by, a, uh, it's like it will, they will be replaced to an API call with the parameters of the user. So it will give the campaign ID, the campaign date, just to make sure, um, and also the user ID, I suppose. And then the API call on the other side, so the, the endpoint will give for this specific user, for her or his interests, all kinds of articles that are related to this period of time. And it will, we will then render it in Mautic 
uh, and the mail will be sent to the user. So this way we have like completely unique emails for everybody. Um, an example of this, I think, is this one. This person was interested in cows and soil or something. Yeah. Uh, voilà. okay. This is uh, just an example of the API call, so it, it just gives an idea. You see here that the type is general news and uh, the campaign ID is one, but of course uh, we are using URL parameters uh, to, to have like the different content in the different... Uh, and the representation will be in the end the same, but you could also give different templates for the different types of news or, or uh, evolve on that. Our goal is to open source this plugin, of course, but it's our first client with this specific type of plugin. Uh, we would love to open source this, but now it's like a little bit too uh, specific. Uh, our next client that asks us this kind of plugin, or if any of you have this request, we can work together to make this more open source and, and uh, get this out there for everybody. That would be really cool. Um, so yeah, inclusion. this enabled us to send out 7,000 unique and personalized emails, uh, fully automated uh, each week. We've done this for I think, three or four weeks now, um, so you can see a little bit of the stats on it. There are 26,000 emails being sent out, um, and they at the moment have a red rate of uh, around 4%. Um, so yeah, in conclusion, um, what do we have now um, is um, a lot in personalization. So when we know who the client is, we can personalize the content on the web platform and personalize the email. Um, for us, this is just the beginning. In the future, we see it, uh, we see it going much further with, uh, for example, you know, uh, anonymous, sorry, uh, personalization, you know, segmentation, and better call to action adapted to the interests of the client and yeah, just the anonymous uh, personalization in general. In this case, we only use two parts of, of the DXP, being the uh, marketing automation platform Motic and the content uh, the CMS Drupal. Uh, and there is still a case for the CDP to uh, personalize this uh, even further. Um, and we also had a lot of learnings uh, in this case because it was the first time we tackled a uh, project this big uh, and with sending out 7,000 personalized emails there come some, uh, some difficulties as I might say. <laughs> you will tell you some more about this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we bumped into a sandwich limitation. I think it was mentioned already earlier here that uh, Queuing or not queuing your mails has an impact? Well, it has an impact. Eh? So if you don't queue your emails, SendGrid will, after a few thousand, say, stop, it's enough, we don't do more. Uh, so you, it's best to queue them, like, anyhow. Uh, so we ran into that. Um, and then also with the cron jobs uh, to import, we had to, uh, in the start of the project, import all these contacts. Also, there's a cron job that we didn't know about, so you have to also import them and then uh, add the cron job to your cron job list. Um, and also, yeah, we are also integrating with Microsoft Dynamics. We bumped into some bugs there that we then also try to fix. Uh, and also the fetch lead uh, thing is also fetching uh, our contacts, uh, fetching and pushing contacts to uh, our Dynamics, which also needed a, a cron job for that. So, um, and also one of the th issues that we ran into was that our cron stopped running because one of the operations people by accident had it disabled and you could, can't see it in the interface so that bothered me also so I, <laughs> uh, quite annoying um, so that's why I also uh, added uh, a feature request to have like a pop-up that you see that your cron is not running uh, it could prevent some pains or sweat <laughs> um, a lot of learnings there um, if you have any questions on uh, this project, I think yeah, I think we're almost at the end. So um, I think uh, now is the time. Interesting presentation. I have a question on the personalization because this is about the environment too. So in, in my case, we had a form, and when somebody submits a form. 
and we use the, uh, like the token from the form submission into the link. Um, the real direct link is broken, so because right now I think the tracking works with static links. Okay, the, the link is changed into slash r slash the uh, the ID of the uh, of the link. But now you are sending uh, like super personalized, so even the links are personalized to match yeah. that person. So the statistics that you will get is either buggy, which I think the case, or they are wrong. So did you did you go into that specific? No, area? no, no, not yet. No. no. <laughs> Yeah. When you do that, please contribute on like how to solve this issue. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Yeah, as you saw in the statistics, we're just like a few runs deep in in this uh, sending these mails. So uh, yeah, I'm very curious to uh, what you say there. Thank you. Any other thoughts you want to? <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about the composable architecture. Um, like, what will, will, for example, happen if you are sending an email with these new tokens and your Drupal instance is down at the moment? Ah, yes, that's, that's, a, yeah, that's certainly an issue. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, I think we had a. Um, uh, we like had one issue, is it all? Uh, but we just cancelled the campaign in Baltic, so it can be cancelled manually. Um, yeah, we were also playing with the, the error mechanism in the when the mail is sent. What happens when the system goes down? Uh, so we've been playing with that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a developer of the system. I have a developer that uh, is not here. But uh, we we were playing with what happens when it goes down. And we're also um, one of the things that we learned was maybe that we shouldn't do like the call for every person. Uh, the alternative idea was that maybe we can fetch all the content for this campaign. In Mautic, and then just like assemble it for every person. You understand? Like the difference is that we don't fetch uh, for every person the API call, but we're fetching the content for one campaign and then assembling it in Mautic. So that's an alternative idea that we are playing with at the moment, maybe to do this differently. I'm just, uh, we are also trying to solve these questions and problems. We have to retry some, something when it goes down, it's always tricky. Um, we saw these three, like how many mails were sent, how many were read, and um, the average open rate. Um, I think it's going to be really difficult in a few. Iterations. I mean, it's already difficult to understand any of this data because it's just, it's barely, it's, it's only the surface of understanding what actually happens in the, in the, in the mail. Because it's one dynamic email that catches all the engagement. And Maltic is, as soon as a link is valid, it appends the link in the history of the email to the clickable links and it's going to be blow up like crazy with the time. The, then you have one email with 17,200 links with no time. And I think this is going to be really interesting what could be done because you know, maybe, maybe you could create a a new email for each newsletter. Yeah, we're working on that at the moment. For now, the tracking is happening in like a separate Excel where we gather all the data about things being clicked and as much as we can now. But it's good uh, in the future, you know, like a year, there will probably be like close to 100,000 or 1 million even, um, email sense or we're looking into a solution to separate it and create one, um, especially for each email uh, at a time, so it's easier. Um, just to be clear, the plugin you guys build yourself with your developers, so it's not really available or not yet, no, no. I'd love to open source it, but it's like a bit too immature. I just, we build it specifically for this case. Uh, I think if we can like do a lot of project on this, then we could like generalize it because the API calls are now hard coded into this uh, plugin. So I would love to make this like configurable. That would be the best case. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, you know, clients have budgets, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, 
So yeah, I would love to open source that in the future. That's certainly uh, also the developer really would love to do that. So that's great. Um, it's but I, I'm happy to share code. If you say okay, we're looking at this functionality, I'm very happy to share you the code and like because it's not very much. It's I think a few class files. And, uh, so that will, it's really doable mm -hmm. uh, if anyone is looking into that. Yeah, because uh, I am doing the newsletters every week for my company, and what I'm basically doing is literally putting links in the newsletter to Drupal, and I'm like, if that can be automated, that would be well, amazing. Well, yeah, you got the answer. It's certainly possible. Yeah. <laughs> so then I can find if the marketplace is like live for you, then I could find it there or like. But there's other possibilities as well. Eh? Drupal has also the 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 XML feed the. Or is this a feed uh, plugin? And there's also, I think, in the Matic RSS plugin where you can automatically import content. I haven't used it myself, but I was suggested on the forum somewhere, so I saw it somewhere. So you, you might look into that and give it a try just to see if it automates the copy pasting for you. Yeah, maybe. I think we should talk later, so we can make at least more. Yeah. Thank you. Well, just one comment on the RSS that it's not going to create personalized email for everyone. It's going to create personalized email in batches. So yeah. it's this is a lot better what you did for this purpose. Yeah, in Canada, yeah it's, it's a different use yeah. case. If an editor is doing a lot of copy paste, it could then copy paste in the content for them. But it's not it doesn't have anything to do with personalization anymore. Any other questions? Okay then, thank you so much for both of you. <laughs>